Good evening, guys. Our story today comes from Acts chapter 8, so let's jump into it. Acts chapter 8, starting in verse 26, about Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. As for Philip, an angel of the Lord said to him, Go south down to the desert road that runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and he met the treasurer of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under the Candace, the queen of Ethiopia. The eunuch had gone to Jerusalem to worship. And he was now returning, seated in his carriage. He was reading aloud from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, Go over and walk along beside the carriage. Philip ran over and heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah. Philip asked, Do you understand what you are reading? The man replied, How can I unless someone instructs me? And he urged Philip to come up into the carriage and sit with him. The passage of scripture he had been reading was this. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb is silent before the shears, he did not open his mouth. He was humiliated and received no justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, was the prophet talking about himself or someone else? So, beginning with this same scripture, Philip told him the good news about Jesus. As they rode along, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, there's some water. Why can't I be baptized? He ordered the carriage to stop, and they went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch never saw him again, but went on his way, rejoicing. Meanwhile, Philip found himself farther north of the town of Azotus. He preached the good news there, and in every town along the way, until he came to Caesarea. So this is a really cool story. First of all, because it shows us um, how Philip followed God's leading. Every time God told him to do something, Philip was like, okay, and he went and did it. And, uh, and God did great things with through him. And then also, there's the cool part where Philip um, teleports right there. Verse 39, when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. And he shows up later at a different town. Obviously, he's teleporting, which is pretty crazy. Um, but it's also a really cool story because God is giving Philip an opportunity to share the gospel, and Philip takes it. And I want you to know that in your life, God is going to put you in opportunities where you have the chance to share the gospel. And, and he's asking you, he's hoping for you to step up and do what he's asking you to do. He wants you to share the good news of Jesus Christ with the people around you. God puts us in the families that we're in, in the schools that we're in, in the cities that we're in. Every situation that you are in is because God has put you there and he wants you to use that situation uh, to share the good news about him. Um, so look, in the, even in the first verse right here, uh, an angel of the Lord, or basically God is telling Philip, go south, down the desert road that runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. He's telling him, go this certain way because I have a plan for you. But Philip doesn't know what the plan is, but he does obey. That's important. When God tells us to do something, we ought to obey. So he started out, and he met the treasurer of Ethiopia. And so, obviously, this is the plan that God had. God knew that the treasurer would be going this way, and he says, Philip, you come this way. I'm setting up what some might call a divine appointment or like a meeting planned by God. Uh, so a couple words here. Treasurer is somebody who takes care of money. Ethiopia is a country. And a eunuch is a name for somebody who is uh, like in charge of a lot of things. They have a lot of power. Um, so an official would be the right term. So this guy is an official of a different country and he works under the queen named Candake. Uh, or at least her, her reign is called the Candig. Uh, so anyways, this guy, this, um, uh, this treasurer had gone to Jerusalem to worship. So obviously he loves God and he knows some things about God, but he's sitting in his carriage while they're heading back home and he's trying to read the Bible and he's reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. So the book of Isaiah and God knows that he needs help. God knows that this treasurer needs help understanding his word. 
And so that's why he sent Philip. And then he says to Philip, verse 29, go over and walk alongside the carriage. He's setting up this appointment, um, this meeting that's going to happen. So Philip, without knowing what the plan is, obeys. Remember, it's important that we obey God without always asking, what exactly is it going to look like? Because sometimes God's not going to give you the answers. He's going to say, just trust me and go. And so Philip walks over next to him and he hears him reading. He says, hey, do you understand what you're reading? And the man replies, how can I unless someone instructs me? And then he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. So again, obviously, God has set this up. He knew that the Ethiopian loves him but doesn't know much about him. And he knew that Philip had the good news of Jesus because he had just seen him raised from the dead. And he says, Philip, go this way. Philip says, okay, God, I trust you. And this other guy's going this way. They meet. And instead of being nervous or awkward, Philip is brave. And he goes, do you understand what you're doing or what you're reading? And so then they read through it. And they're talking about this passage. It says, he was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb is silent before his shears, he did not open his mouth. This passage is a prophecy from a couple hundred years earlier about Jesus. And so when he reads this, when Philip reads it, he goes, oh, this is about Jesus. Because Jesus, he was led, you know, like when a sheep was taken to be eaten, they would kill it, they would slaughter it. And, uh, and the sheep don't know what's going on, they're dumb, right? So the sheep is silent before it's killed. Um, Jesus knew what was happening, but he didn't fight back against everyone that was trying to kill him because he knew he needed to die to be our sacrifice. He needed to be the lamb that would take away our sins. And so, in the same way that a sheep is silent before they get killed, um, Jesus didn't fight back against uh, the people that were trying to kill him because he knew this was God's plan. Um, verse 35, he was humiliated and received no justice. Obviously, Jesus died for sins he didn't commit. That's not justice. That's, that's a mistake. But it was human's mistake. It was part of God's plan. Um, and then, who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. Obviously, Jesus had no kids because he, uh, he died before he married and had kids. So, um, he had no descendants. His life was taken from the earth. And then, once he rose again, he went back up to heaven. So, the eunuch asked Philip, verse 34, Tell me, was the prophet talking about himself or someone else? And so then, Philip has just been given this question. And he goes, boom, I know the answer to that. And so beginning with this exact scripture, Philip told him the good news about Jesus. He explained, this passage is talking about Jesus. Let me tell you what he did. You know, he lived a perfect life. He died. Um, and if we have faith in him, then he will have paid for our sins and we can live with God in heaven forever. So he's telling him the good news based off of uh, this question that the eunuch asks. And then they get baptized and Philip teleports just for fun. So the important thing I want you to understand is that God sets up situations in our lives for us to make a choice. He brings people into our lives and us coming along the other way or he'll say go do this or go do that and if we're obedient and we say okay God I don't exactly know what the plan is but I'll do what you say. If we trust him and then when, once we see that situation, like in this case, the guy literally asked, what does this mean? Sometimes your friends might be like, what do you believe? Or what church do you go to? Or, um, you know, who's Jesus? Why do you pray? Why, you know, why is your family Christians? These are all questions that can set you up for the perfect opportunity to share what you believe about Jesus. And, and God gives you those opportunities. And he's hoping that you will make the choice to be obedient and tell others about what he's done for you. Remember, in order to go to heaven, you have to believe in Jesus. It doesn't just happen automatically. You have to recognize what he's done, say thank you for what he's done, and trust that that will get you um, past death, past your sins, and into heaven. And so that's important news that your friends need to hear. You can't just live your life and expect them to somehow know. So... 
God puts you in those positions. He gives you the friends that you have so that you have opportunities to share the good news about Jesus. So don't give up on it. Make sure you do it.